Hi, welcome to another episode of the Visual Storytelling Today podcast. The show is designed for you, the marketer or entrepreneur, who may be looking for more effective ways to connect better with audiences through the exciting world of visual storytelling. We will introduce you to inspiring experts from diverse industries that bring fresh perspectives on how to capture attention, build trust, emotional empathy, and last but not least, drive business results. Enjoy the show. Hi, I'm Shlomi Ron. I'm the founder and CEO of the Visual Storytelling Institute. We are based here in sunny Miami, Florida, and our mission is really bringing the gospel of visual storytelling from the world of art into more human and purposeful marketing. So as you've been following my podcast, you've probably seen that in the past couple of episodes, I was focusing on largely on the metaverse and Web3. So today I figured, you know, I'm going to change a little bit uh, our direction and focus on something more earthy, like uh, how people use pets in their visual storytelling. So this is a very interesting uh, topic because the the fact is that we all love uh, animals. And if you look at the recent stats, you'll see that 70% of U.S. households own a pet. And this is up from 50, 56% in 1988, which is incredible. And overall, the, the pet industry is expected to reach a $360 billion by 2027. So I'm sure you all have your own examples of pets in ads, like Taco Bell Chihuahua, the Target Bull Terrier, and others. So today we're going to talk about how can brands use pets in visual storytelling to create emotional connections. To help me with this uh, mission, I invited Mindy Dotka. She's the founder and chief storyteller at Dogs I Meet. And she has tremendous experience in this uh, field of visual storytelling using pets for both brands and pet brands. So with that, welcome to the show, Mindy. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me on the show. Awesome. No, this is great. You know, when we first met, you know, I was kind of quite, uh, you know, fascinated by the way you use the camera <laughs> to tell visual stories uh, for brands using pets. So I figured, you know, let's dig deeper into this. And before we do, I'd love to kind of get a, a sense of your backstory, how you got started, what was that magic moment that made you decide, okay, I'm going to focus on visual storytelling using pets. Well, it started, I'll say it started with my lifelong love of, of dogs. Um, and I also have a lifelong love of photography. I got my first dog and my first camera at the age of seven. Oh, wow. And since then, I've not been without either. <laughs> <laughs> I have a very varied um, background before I came to dog photography. Um, I had an event planning company um, for many years. Mm -hmm. I worked at Fortune 500 companies in sales and done a, done a variety of other things. And um, at about six years ago, I just reached a point and thought it was time to create a career that I was, you know, passionate about. And uh, Makes sense. I, I decided, <clears throat> well, why don't I just marry my two loves yep. um, and photography? And um, when I first started, you know, I mean, I was uh, an amateur um, mm -hmm. photographer. Who, who always loved photography. But since then, you know, I've done a lot of work and every, like anything else, every niche is different that you photograph. And certainly right. dogs is very different than photographing sports or, or, or different things. But um, my connection um, with dogs, I like to say I, I definitely speak dog. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I have a lot of patience for dogs and, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm knowledgeable about dogs and I work on their time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that comes through in the photos um, right. that I take. Were you and taking also, any? Were you taking any photography uh, programs? I've taken many photography programs since I started, varying I from online mm -hmm. to one-on-one -on -one in-person mentorships to wow. um, uh, group workshops. Um, I see. 
you know, so, so, and that's just an ongoing <laughs> quest. Right. Yeah. To perfect the craft. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. exactly. And then, you know, my belief, the tagline of my business is because every dog has a tail. T-A-L. I love it. it. It's so clever. I always want to tell you this. It's, you know, when the first time I saw it, I said, whoa, this is really way to remember this brand <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you very much and you know to me every dog does have a tail like I, people who own dogs that mm-hmm. particularly that got rescue dogs yeah. um I, i'm pretty sure like me you, you look at the dog and you're like so what happened what, like <laughs> what happened before you got here and you start to make up stories in your head and yeah uh, And then, you know, so dogs have many stories and then dogs bring to us many stories. Absolutely. Then I just sort of took that a step further into businesses and Mm. and, and brands. When I first started, I did private clients, um, but my background in events and everything was more of a B2B. So I I was looking um, you know, as my photography improved and, um, I got, you know, more adept and, and with my skills and other things and also a passion for, for storytelling. Um, yeah. you know, I started to do work for, for brands and, um, and, um, I so- primarily work with pet brands, but mm-hmm. I can certainly work with any brands and, you know, we'll start to talk about that. Right, I mean, right. So we, before, we, before we talk about, you know, the your actual work with brands, let's take a kind of a, a forest view first. Uh, and this is a question I ask all my guests, you know, how you really define based on your trajectory, uh, what is visual storytelling from your standpoint? Visual storytelling is, it could be um, symbols, it could be drawings, and in my, you know, my language is photography. Yeah. Uh, so to me, when you look at a photograph, and it it literally, you know, it paints a picture, and right. it uses light, and it lo- uses images, and the way a picture is together. It, it doesn't always. It's not always the most technically correct mm-hmm. photo. Right. There. Yep. The 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 main thing to me is if it evokes emotion. Yep. And it draws you in, it makes you question what the story is. And I think it's almost not even that it, it's the job of a photographer to lead you into that photograph with a story. And it doesn't, not to tell them the exact story, because everybody could look at the same photograph. Live a mystery. Yep. Right. With I the see. mystery of it. I um, see. So and to me, it, it's a visual storytelling um, really wraps also around feelings, um, you know. Again, and do you think the story part of visual storytelling, do you think it's in your craft, is it more implicit in a sense that it's not textual, it's not uh, explicit like a caption? You don't do like the actual story in terms of copyright. You mostly focus on the photography, right? Right. When I, but you know, uh, I'll keep in mind what is the story I'm trying to capture. I see. So, Got uh, it. Uh, um, you know, if, if I'm specifically, you know, on a job or even, you know, what captures that story. Got so it. It, you know, it could be as much as a, a day, a family outing. What was I that see. story? What was that moment? And that's the thing I think that, um, you know, photographers, um, just like, writers a lot of people you you have a really vast awareness right it seems like you you spot things that maybe somebody else didn't spot and you look at it in a certain way and it's like you know if if you're knowledgeable about the technical aspect of it right you you know um that you look at it and it intrigues you exactly Um, exactly no this is so so true i see it all the time Let's stay still on the first view level. <laughs> okay. And, and, and what would you say is the main reason, you know, use, when you use pets, it creates a strong emotional connection with audiences? Um, for a lot of different reasons. Um, mm-hmm. you know, to, um, it's so varied. It could be for individuals with their pets, mm-hmm. you know, um, and it creates, Priceless memories. I mean, sadly that, you know, dogs don't live that long. Right. 
you know, they live fully. And I yeah. feel like, you know, having photos that really honor the dog in their mm-hmm. spirit. Like we all have pictures on our iPhone and everyone's right. like, look at this picture. And you're like, wait, I, I can't really see. It's kind of blurry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you know, so really, you know, capturing photos that do justice mm. to the subjects and the stories. Um, it's a great tool in animal advocacy. I found, you know, literally my photos give a voice to the voiceless dogs. Right. Um, I photograph for shelters. I photograph for rescues. It's enabled me to bring awareness to places, you know, small villages in Mexico, in Cartagena, where yeah, people are yeah. doing amazing work. And you could talk about it. And I could tell that story to somebody. But right. when I show a photo to somebody of what was there. It's universal language. Yeah, you don't need to translate that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And and it's also so impactful. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we all have memories, visions, um, whether it's from, I'm dating myself, but Life Magazine. Yeah. uh, (laughs) You know, uh, um, images of of, of momentous occasions, whether they're sad happy and if you go back in your brain you know yep. it's an image that pops up it's yep. it's, it's, it's rarely words and they're absolutely serious. so yep. it's you know super powerful and like i guess is the word subjective you know everybody sees something different too when no. when they look at an image yeah yeah no this is i see you know the use of pets is definitely a powerful way to create empathy just because of their likability and that uh, emotional bond that, uh, you know, pet owners, doesn't matter if you have a dog or a cat. I, I was just having a, a weekend with friends that had a cat. So I <laughs> went through this whole experience, how they tend for it. And, you know, the whole, uh, you know, behavioral changes uh, based on the environment. Uh, so people can trigger all this uh, relatable moments uh, that you catch Mm -hmm. in your photos to, you know, things they have in their own home or their friends or somebody from their past, to your point about uh, earlier scenes that uh, kind of stuck in their mind. So, yeah, no, this is uh, fantastic. So let's talk a little bit about uh, your work at uh, Dogs I Meet. Uh, can, Can you talk a little bit about your typical services and... I know you have several use cases. Sure. Um, I mean, you know, at, at the core, I'm a dog photographer, yep. um, you know, with a background in marketing and, and, and brand strategy and, and you know, storytelling. So mm-hmm. versus a photo of, say, like a dog um, just sitting there with a product next to it, you know, right. doesn't necessarily tell that story you right. know, if you're talking about even um you know uh, a, a, for example i i did a photo shoot for um it was like a dog supplement company I and see. all of their previous photos were that just that a dog with the product next to it and and i mean i'm not saying that you don't match that up sure. but you know i was like well what's this story behind it you know like yeah. why they, why do people care why do people want to buy this supplement you know exactly uh, and, and you know it's for health and it's also like a wellness mm. you know and and they want to um elevate you know what they're doing for their dog so i did a full series like really of like a dog being served a breakfast tray <laughs> with the supplement on it in bed we, you oh. know the dog had a little bond oh that's so funny <laughs> you know and it was it was very engaging and it didn't you know it brought you into it and 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 you could create different stories in your mind but the idea again was that you really care about your dog and you want your dog to have the best yeah it's <laughs> like a humanizing a strategy of kind of putting the dog a, doing things a you know a human would do in this case right it, Yep. You know, mm-hmm. which we all do. So that's one example. Yeah. Uh, I have another client um, that's um, uh, veterinary emergency hospitals mm-hmm. and um, they're 24 seven, but they're, they're really unique. Mm-hmm. And um, their story is, is that they don't separate you from your pet. Right. So, you know, um, it's such a 
takes the stress level down. I mean, being in an emergency hospital, whether it's oh, yeah. humans or animals, is extremely stressful. And, you know, if anybody has a dog this or a is pet, amazing. You go, generally you go into these places, you wait in the waiting room. They take right. the animals from you. You're terrified. The animal's terrified. No, <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, you know, so this company, you know, is you know, on a mission to change, you know, emergency. And they realize that they've got this powerful story. And, you know, they were really clear on what their story was. And they wanted photographs to tell the story of uh, them in action. And it was very difficult to get the photographs because, you know, in an um you know, a veterinary hospital, the lighting is poor, it's fluorescent, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. crazy things going on. So they, they knew that they needed to bring somebody in mm. and yep. capture the yep. story. Right. So in in an instance like that, that that is the story. I'm not creating the story. I'm documenting. Yes, yeah, a documentary initiative. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so I would stay, you know, for hours and just sort of capture what mm -hmm. came through the door yeah um, you know and um you know just try to frame it or catch those moments even when somebody you know a look on somebody's face a look on the dog's face um so that's another you know strong storytelling um right but regardless if it's a it's a marketing or you know office wall art you mentioned or therapy like in the case you just described what is the the process you go through with the client i mean do they give you a brief do they give you a business goals uh, do you do some research it varies i i start doing my own mm -hmm. you know research so that i i, I come in knowledgeable uh, about them uh -huh. um and then um, I do, you know, try to spend quite a bit of time because their story is so important. Their story is the story I'm trying to tell. Right, right. Um, and particularly um, in pet brands, like mm -hmm. founders' origin stories are very often because of a relationship that they had with a pet that oh. made them want to find a solution. Interesting. And, Back, back to the um, the emergency room. You know yeah. this 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 uh, the fellow who created it. You know he said you don't take your child into an emergency room and they don't take your child away. Like why why do we do things this way? Right. I don't want to do things this way. Yeah. I want to be disruptor and exactly. do it the way it should be. Sure, people who start you know these um, fresh food for dogs, mm. uh, the supplements, all of that. If you go into their story, most times it was, like I said, a pet that they lost to an I illness see. or a pet that had some kind of terrible food allergies and couldn't keep food down. So they started right. on their own, um, you know, and when you start to uncover mm -hmm. their story, that's the power. Um, um, yeah. Because then you know how to basically focus in your photography on certain elements in the story and amplify them. So it's easy for, I guess, the audience to capture that as they view the, the photo. It, it, exactly. And, you know, um, I mean, our pets are mm -hmm. basically our children, you know, and yep. that's, that's one of the reasons why we're about to see a $360 billion pet industry. It, yeah. It's absolutely exploded so you sure. also need to when you're telling the story you need to build trust right otherwise why would somebody want to buy that product if you right. have instilled trust yep sure there's facts and 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 all kinds of things like, like that but it, it's the stories the stories of the customers mm -hmm. the, the stories of the business so and you know it's my job to find ways to show that Right. You know. But isn't it true, you know, I know that obviously we all emotional uh, decision maker or emotional buyers, and especially in photography, you can convey emotion very powerfully. But the first step in every photo, obviously, is to capture attention before you even can talk about trust and empathy. 
Do you do anything special to capture attention in your photography? I think the attention is the way that I photograph dogs. Mm. And it, it, it's my skill at getting a dog and like I photograph thousands of dogs and you can actually see different expressions right. on that. Um, and, and different emotions from the dogs. And, um, you, you know, if you able to capture that, like that, that starts the conversation. Right. <laughs> I think this is a, actually a great segue. Maybe show us a few examples, the visuals that you have, and uh, you know, can discuss that. Sure, I'm going to share my screen. And great. There we go. So th this, um, I'll show you that one later. Here's the um, the veterinary emergency group, um, and you can see um, this is their staff. But I mean, you can see the intensity and the emotion yeah. on, on everybody's face. And they're not doing it in a, in a, they have an open ER policy. So it's I super see. transparent. And there are other people in the room at, at the see. same time, um, which actually works to lower the, um, um, uh, anxiety, uh, uh for, for others. Mm. And, Again, you know, here showing that this dog is, you know, he, here's, here's the person who works there. Here's the owner of the dog. And oh, you can I just see. see how much calmer the dog is. You know, it's, it's remaining, right. um, you know, so you, you get a feeling as well from that. A quick here's question, a quick question about the, the previous one. Mm -hmm. do, do you, do you do also like a series of photos like this one to me, you know, when I first saw it, I thought this is like the, the resolution part of the story when the you know the the dog is brought back to the owner after the treatment and this is kind of the resolution of the story kind of the release do you find yourself doing like a before middle and after kind of stories sometimes when mm. i can it, it it it's not always so in a story on this too is mm. part of part of their marketing is is that they meet the dog where they're at so that's an actual exam i see okay? um they do their exams on the floor they do what needs to be done to keep the mm. dog comfortable Got it. Uh, and in this you know you can't really see it in this in instance uh this dog wasn't quite as sick so they I did see. it in the lobby versus in the er uh, right because they could here here's another story uh you know that this is happening and this cat is literally perfect <laughs> <laughs> yeah on on his dad's back because he's comfortable and that's right. how you know that they're doing the exam um i see so so it, it kind of you know varies and uh, ultimately once you had like for them i do mm -hmm. a lot of photos mm -hmm. uh, and it depends on what they're using do you ask them questions like, what is uh, your target emotion uh, for this uh, visual story that you're trying to communicate? Well, for, for that particular one, I know they're trying. And actually, if I go back here, this mm -hmm. is a quote from the marketing mm -hmm. manager, the chief marketing officer. Uh, yep. and what they're trying to convey is the unique relationship between their team and the pets that they care for. I and see. they don't separate them. Got um, it. And, and the transparency. So, so that, like, mm. that's always what I'm conveying. For, Got it. For them. Um, you know, so I have that in my mindset when, when I'm looking at photos and then right. stories literally unfold in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 No, you, this is, you know, this is I mean, I can look one way and sometimes I just see um, a person like you're allowed to sleep overnight. Mm -hmm. like, you don't have to, you never need to leave the pet. If you want to sleep on the floor, or if you want to sleep on a cot, um, you do. I uh, see. So, so people don't leave. So sometimes I capture just that, you know, right. the intense emotion of that human, you know, worried about their pet. In, yeah. In, the B-roll moments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. You know, it, exactly. And this here, this is actually a bed and breakfast in um, Martha's Vineyard, oh, which dogs. is dog friendly. <laughs> so, funny. I mean, 
literally, you know, um, you know, as a bed and breakfast, it's like a charming homey place and you feel like you're in your own home, but it's generally usually much nicer than your own home. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. And your dog is there with you. So yeah. it's an elevated experience. Um, sure. So these are different it, things it could do. The, the dog could do it at the hotel, right? Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so mm -hmm. I mean, and the idea in this is, you know, like our home is your home and your yep. dogs too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That kind of thing. Um, here's a, you know, um, pet brand, which also the origin story on this was, I think they, they are, uh, a husband and wife team um one's a harvard grad one's an mit grad mm. uh, they had a cat that like was sick <laughs> and they were trying to feed it different things and they did all kinds of research and they yep. came up with this food but you know in this the idea is you know you look at that picture and it makes you smile <laughs> literally like i mean that dog looks like they're having a conversation the yeah. dog is like whoa can't wait to get my hands on that food you know because he really <laughs> couldn't wait <laughs> yeah yeah you no, know for um, sure. so again it's that that feeling you know mm -hmm. uh, i think it was simon sinek that, that that had a quote you know people people buy a feeling you yeah. know you can't yeah. tell them there's value they have right. to feel that exactly value. Uh, um for sure you yeah. know, so that's what i'm aiming for and again you know when you understand the story and you know you know i mean i, I set this up but then the interaction was organic you know right. like was authentic and i just waited for that moment to capture that authentic engagement of, yeah. of what the story was right you know, this here, this is a very um, cool place. It's it's called a tiny house resort. I don't know if you know about the little tiny houses that's kind of popular these days. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so um, it's up in upstate New York. And I, I don't know, they have like 20 luxury tiny houses on acres and acres of beautiful land with waterfall and pool. But they are super dog friendly. Um, oh, I see. So, like I call if you're a, like a person who travels with your dog, mm -hmm. Kimpton Hotels. I probably shouldn't be dropping all these names, but yeah, you know, yeah. I, I don't work for Kimpton. I'd like to. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I call this tiny house the Kimpton of tiny right. because they're truly like pet friendly. You know, some places are like, yeah, if your dog's under twenty five pounds, you know, we'll let you pay us another seventy five dollars yeah. plus a seventy five dollar cleaning fee but yeah oh, we're, we're pet friendly you know but kimpton's motto is if it can walk through the door you can keep that pet there <laughs> right yeah um, and it's actually kind of turned this on its head you know in, instead of kind of a no pet policy you know when it's pet friendly it's actually a nice you know kind of differentiating perk uh, to attract customers it, mm -hmm. it, exactly so you know this was an um an ad you can vaguely see mm -hmm. behind there the person. Oh yeah, you know the dog having an awesome time. You yep. know, and, and they talk about and and it in the end it's we promise an unforgettable bonding experience with mm. you and your dog. Um, yeah, yep. that kind of thing. So they did a full like um, dog weekend. <laughs> <laughs> they had all kinds of perks, and actually, I was there photographing for them both for brand photos and capturing the event oh i but, see um people who came that weekend got i photographed their dog complimentary mm. because the hotel paid for it um so it was a perk as well that they came away with yeah i like the dynamic movement on the right yeah right like i mean yeah. again these are dogs in mm -hmm. action yep. playing with this ball yeah like you know, focus the the toy is flying in the air. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, you know, so you can see you get that feeling. That yep. I want my dog to enjoy that like that. Like, yeah. And, and to your point earlier, you know, sometimes when you see uh, static photos, like in these dynamic uh, examples, what norm typically happens is that uh, the viewers complete the story in their minds. 
basically of what happened before and what will happen after. Right. <laughs> so this is just a, the trigger, basically, to start the story uh, based on their bag of experiences from the past. It, it, exactly. It kind of mm-hmm. goes back to what I was saying is it's like it's it's your job to draw them in yeah. and, and and let them then tell their own story, but in a way you want it to be. Right. <laughs> you, you yeah, because you already frame it for them and right. you know the, the, the caption, the, the copy gives them the direction. Yeah. It, it, mm-hmm. Exactly. You mm-hmm. know. So and actually these dogs all in this photo are rescue dogs. Oh, I see. Um, so I very often mm-hmm. will work with re- rescue dogs from shelters or you know rescue dogs to give them exposure. Yeah, uh, I worked with the Louisiana SPCA. I happen mm-hmm. to have been taken in New Orleans, um, and that's a bonus. It's a program that I offer. Um, so first of all, the Louisiana SPCA shares Mm -hmm. the photos. Um, I see. So it's double exposure. The exposure for the dogs is particularly this middle one was up for Mm. adoption, you know? Right. So so it's, it's, um, you know, if you want to talk about stories, a good photo can mean a life and a death of a rescue animal. Um, Yeah, for sure. People need to see that dog in their home. They need yep. to look at a photo and say, yeah, I can see me playing with that dog. That's actually a very important point you just made here that I keep pounding on my clients and students is that we have this unique uh, capability. I call it superpower to visualize things that never happened yet. Right, like the fact you just described, I can definitely, I can perfectly see myself having this dog in my backyard. Mm-hmm. It's a capability we all have, and we use it in a variety of ways. Like even when you do house hunting and you enter a living room, that boom, you get this chemistry. I can perfectly see myself entertaining here. It's the same, same muscle <laughs> that we same all thing. have. You took the words out of my mouth. I was going <laughs> to say staging a house, you yeah, know, yeah. So, and leaving it more as a blank. Exactly. And and when you stage a house, you leave it more as a blank canvas because you want people to fill that, look at it and fill it with their ideas and their memories. Exactly. You know, with a dog, when you see a photo of a dog in poor lighting, Mm -hmm. dirty and scared because it was just brought in to Mm -hmm. a rescue in a cinder block in the corner. Yep. You look at that and, and people wrongly so but people do feel that dogs and shelters Mm. have something wrong with them that's why they're there i see when you look at that photo that perpetrates that thought process yeah you know again it's the story you want to tell Um, sure so if you take time you know i i often volunteer at places to take Mm -hmm. photos of dogs and it takes a while because you have to, you know, these dogs are scared. So yep. you have to wait a little bit until they're comfortable. Right. Um, you know, and to then, work with them to kind of let them relax. It's almost like taking a portrait photography with people, right? <laughs> ab- absolutely. You know, and the same thing, yep. you know, um, when you, you start to notice, you see their body language, you know? So if mm. I see a dog with their ears down and their eyes down, you know, Break, time out. <laughs> oh, I see. So you can read all those little signs of the body language of the dogs. Wow, that's right. incredible. So, you know, that's <clears throat> the difference, too. Mm-hmm. Of if, if for, uh, for any, you know, people are like, let's throw a dog in the picture. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't get that unless it's a person that understands dogs and is trained in taking right. dog photos. So, so, you know, there's a benefit to having somebody like me do your photographs, yeah. rather, you know, than a Cause, general. Cause you might say you have another hat you're wearing. In addition to being a photographer, you like a dog whisperer in a way right. that knows how to engage the dog. Right. Otherwise, you know, <clears throat> um, yeah. And then I bring it to, you know, we talk about, um, I always say put a dog in the picture, any brand. Mm. And, um, you know, it's not new. I mean, here's just, you know, some Ikea, Target, Hyundai, 
Yep. Banks do it, you know, people, yep. all kinds of people, you know, they realize that there's an emotional attachment that, you know, um, they just have a memory attachment. Like those mm -hmm. photos stay in your mind. Mm -hmm. Think about the Super Bowl photos. But right. Like, um, yeah. You, you know, which one did everybody remember at the end? The dog that chased after the Clydesdale? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, I remember well, that. Right. Mm -hmm. And and it results in, in, in more sales. Um, and you could take it a step further to, you know, brands that, um, you know, get involved. And um, there was, I think it was WeatherTech, mm. um, who, who, you know, mostly makes the car um, mats. But um, this went... Um, yeah, yep. makes the car match, but they also do make like dog bowls and things like that. Um, right. The owner of that, his dog Scout, a golden retriever, is featured in many, many WeatherTech um, commercials. Oh, interesting. That, that yeah. dog got, um, I, I don't have it to show it. I almost put it in there. Mm. The dog got cancer. Um, and I believe it was the University of Wisconsin Veterinary School. Um, um, he took the dog to that hospital and they treated the dog and the dog, it turned out it was in remission. It did wind up mm. passing away shortly after, but I, I can't remember which Super Bowl it was. The man paid $6 million and the ad is about his dog. And it's a tribute to this hospital for saving oh, wow. his dog's life. Unbelievable. So, yeah. You know, you're talking about the layers of connection and emotions. He didn't even do a weather tech commercial. Yeah. He, you know, he, that's incredible. And he wound up through that cause marketing. You know, he he mm -hmm. raised a lot of money for the hospital, which yeah. he wanted to do because they saved his dog's life. No, so, it's, you know, yeah, the, the emotional story and he's definitely an important player here. But but, you know, what you said earlier, you know, the, the fact that uh, pets has uh, this built-in likability <laughs> that brands want to use that because once you have that likability, those positive emotions cross over eventually to the brand. Exactly. I think it's actually 56. To, I, I can't quote the name of the study, but it. 56% more likely, if you put a dog in mm -hmm. your ad, yep. that there's 56% more likely intent to purchase right. um, what what that is. Yeah. We all know this guy. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just, there we go. Oops. Um, he's been around since 1999. They've uh -huh. used him. And they yep. put him in about 20 different ads a year. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a lot. And then this one, I'll, I'll fast forward, but this is a brilliant commercial from Hyundai. Um, it starts off with um, they got a new car. Yeah. Oh, they got a new puppy. Guy's not really very happy. <laughs> um, you know, and it's taught, you know, it brings you through this whole story. Yeah, the of, struggles. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. The struggles. But now you start to see like a bond mm -hmm. happening between them. Um, and he's really like the dog is becoming his best friend. Here you go. You see now he's right. playing with the dog. Yep. And they've, you know, all they're doing is the car. And they're marking the miles, the, the life, <laughs> the journey of the car through the relationship. Right. And then this is now the kids come, dog sitting in the front. They're wearing lookalike clothes. The dogs have now, uh, the kids have been relegated to the back. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, it's your journey. So to me, brilliant. <laughs> yeah, and, and this is the, the type of, you know, examples that I, that's why I like visual storytelling, unlike the traditional, you know, interruption marketing or advertising that folks on buy now. Right. There's a story here. It feels like a short film from Netflix, you know. Right. <laughs> so, so that's why, you know, when you see that, you know, the barriers are coming down, you consume it as, you know, a normal form of art. And, and that's the beauty of it, because when you focus on the art first and, and the brand second, I think that's where, you know, it can connect uh, more emotionally. So, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's great. So, 
I'm kind of wondering, you know, since you've been doing a lot of footage shot, uh, like uh, photo shoots uh, with different brands, uh, how were you managing during the pandemic, you know, with, with everything remote? <laughs> uh, the pandemic shut me down. Okay. That, that, that that is the problem there you know uh, you can do like a remote photo shoots or there are people that can uh yep. i think there was a picture of uh megan and harry under a tree i see when she was pregnant and it was right. a photographer in england that did that through an ipad oh uh, i see so there are some you know mm. there are ways to do it um yep. but in general you know it just you know, it was, uh, the pandemic mm. was really, mm. took me a lot of time to, <laughs> to kind of readjust, <laughs> yeah. to readjust because I yeah. had built my business. I also travel um, mm. to rescues um, I see. in Mexico and Cartagena. I, I was doing work in Puerto Rico on site. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On site. And for there, um, I had actually gone to Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria. Mm, to wow. document the oh, the problem that they were having because mm. otherwise people people can't relate to it. You can you can talk about it, but got it. You no, know that makes sense. Once you see it, so you know I'd created a business that had all of my loves: travel, mm. dogs, photography, storytelling. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know for sure. Yeah. You know, but interestingly enough, after you know doing nothing for months, but trying to figure out yeah. like what was my pivot and, and what am I going to do? Um, I came up with the, I, I gave a lot of thought to dogs and their role during mm -hmm. the pandemic. Right. And, um, and oh for, yeah, the stress reliever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, it was their shining moment. I coined the phrase that, 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 you know, the pandemic made every dog a therapy dog. Yeah, so because, true. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, and so what I wound up also doing, loneliness, the problem of loneliness. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable. I did yeah. a project because uh, um, I did a pri a personal project, a passion project called Tales of Support, mm -hmm. and it was about just that. And I mm -hmm. interviewed people, so I got both the narrative yeah. and the stories. Um, I see. Actually, there's. Uh, let me just see if I can. I could possibly hold on one second. I'm going to just, but um, so it was called tales of support. I interviewed probably about 25 people and got a lot of different stories again. Um, and then I photographed them and um, that really basically kind of saved my business because I wound up getting press from it. Let me see. Oh, I see. And uh, I'm going to share again, just to give you an idea of what that was. Yeah. And these are all dog owners or not necessarily? Yeah. And they're people, there was a, a wide variety of mm. people um, that got dogs during the pandemic. Oh, I see. That yeah. had dogs and um, like... Mm. And this is she's a healthcare worker, and it talks about how isolated she was, you know, on the front line. And when yep. she came home, you know, how the dog was her salvation. Mm. Uh, this girl is actually a vet student, and I there's see. a whole <laughs> backstory. Yeah. But you can see also if I, you know, through the photos, you just That's get a, a great step. idea of their relationship, you yeah. know, um, this one here, she worked, um, also in a senior home, which mm. got hit so bad. And she talks about, um, how at night she would come home and, you know, like a complete emotional wreck and she'd mm -hmm. take the dog out for walks and nice. she talked to the dog. Wow. <laughs> and like, you know, she'd go for a walk for an hour and she'd tell the dog all the things that were bottled up in her. Yeah. Um, and, it's... you know, she talks about how that was a lifesaver. And like, even these photos, there's layers of stories. These were taken at um, this girl's um, alma mater college mm. um, that her mom graduated from, that she graduated right. from. So, you right. know, it, so... there were 
different stories. Um, this one here, um, these people had just gotten engaged. I think mm-hmm. it was Valentine's Day. They got engaged. It was beginning or middle of March that it happened. This fella had just bought a um, franchise, uh, I think, Sweet Sweetwaters. Mm. Uh, coffee shop so these were taken in their coffee shop she's a nurse <laughs> uh you know and and again it, it yeah just... different walks of lives and is, is it uh, all these uh, stories uh, you did during the pandemic or during the pandemic so That's amazing. I, I figured out that i was able to do it i would interview them on zoom mm. and schedule um the photo shoot. This is yeah. probably the only the one yeah. with the coffee was the only one done indoors. indoors but I yeah. used a long lens, so mm. um, I see. So you, you were know. not too, too close. Yeah, got it exactly. Mm-hmm. So it was really you know within the COVID protocol. Um, awesome, that's okay. great. I mean, what a wonderful project! You know, congratulations. You know, it's a, it's a great example for for everybody. You know, watching or, or uh, tuning in right now. You know, sometimes. When you are in a going through a rough patch in your job, you know, try to figure out, you know, how to turn this lemon into lemonade, like in this example. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was like, oh, and I mean, it, it also it gave me content to yeah. talk about on LinkedIn exactly. and, and Instagram. And on, for me as well, you know, like once mm-hmm. I started photographing again and once I started doing things, it was, it was, you know, it was good for me because. No. Yeah. You know. Something to do and something to kind of uh, continue uh, working. Right. This is great. Before I forget, you know, if you go back to your uh, backdrop uh, in your office right now, you, yes. you talked about the third use case that you focus on, on which is a, a little bit interesting. You talked about wall art in offices uh, where you use pets. Exactly. So, you know, not we, we've t- spent a lot of time talking about the benefits of, yeah. of, of pets. Um, you know, I mean, literally um, o- oxytocin. They, yeah. You know, it's, a, it's increased by 300% by mm-hmm. looking at a picture. Yep. Not just the dog. So certainly, you know, in an mm-hmm. accountant's office, in a dentist's office, yep. in a hospital, you can't have the pets, but you can have the benefits of the right. pets. Um, and and that's not necessarily for pet brands. It could be for any brand. Any brand. And and even more so, mm-hmm. uh, I recommend it for non-pet brands. Yeah. Uh, any kind of service business mm-hmm. that involves a lot of trust. Yep. Um, you know, lawyers, accountants. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a complete icebreaker. Kind people of humanizing the experience a little bit. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, people will look at a picture. Oh, you know, it starts a conversation. Exactly. Uh, and, um, you know, it builds trust. Um, it draws them in. It yep. makes them smile. They're more relaxed. Uh, yep. so there's, huge benefits to car dealers mm. is a great place interesting to have, to have them um you know and i mean they really are a work of art you know sure. uh, uh, um you know and again stories like th- this is my dog um mm-hmm. on a beach in martha's vineyard but you yep. know she, to me, like, it's her rin tin tin moment. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you know, and even just a shot of her at the beach, mm-hmm. you start thinking right away, you know. Yeah. yeah. What do I have in my Rolodex of uh, visuals from the past that uh, relates to this photo that I can uh, appreciate? How does it make sense in my world? Right. <laughs> you know, and um, the other one, you know, capturing there is that bond. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that I talk about that, that's really, you know, that moment in time. That's sure. another thing that I love about photography is how, you know, it, it literally freezes a moment in, in time. The other thing you can do as well is use it as an incentive. There are different ways. So if I go in and I'm going to photograph for a business, mm-hmm. let's say it's a dentist's office. Right. You know? First of all, it's a great distraction while they're, they're sitting yeah. there. But I can photograph the people's, the employees' dogs. Mm. So, you know, that becomes part of the package. 
So now they've just given, you know, a really great perk to oh, I see. the people in their office because everybody like likes to see their dogs photographed. Yeah, because typically you go to a cube in an office, you see, you know, their pets in you know, framed uh, photos and, you know, on the desk or something. Yeah, exactly. So it's like an added bonus mm -hmm. that you've just given your employees a retention you know, scheme, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A retention scheme. Yeah. You know, they love it, brings them joy every yeah. time that they look at that. The, the veterinary clinic, mm -hmm. I go around the country to those different offices because they don't, they each hospital wants their own people. Right. You know? Because yeah. that's meaningful to their employees. Mm -hmm. So you can do that, you know, using yeah. Walla for, yeah. for business. Uh, yeah, absolutely. This is, uh, I really love this idea of uh, wall art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, before we close, uh, you know, just say, uh, I'm kind of wondering, you know, if you can give me like your top three tips for any brand that would like to enter, you know, to use pets in their visual storytelling and not necessarily pet brands. Um, really think of the story, mm -hmm. you know, what, what, like, what do you want to convey? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, and, you know, um, and then you, you need to work with someone, uh, you yeah. know, and, and you can be a smaller brand, you know, I mean, sure. you know, like, like, like this, the Hyundai that did that, they, they probably, or the Subaru. Sure. Big one. I, I forgot the name of those dogs. They, they do it big. You know, yeah. I mean, they've got dog trainers there. Yeah. It's a whole they've production. Got a yeah. whole mm -hmm. production. Yeah. You don't have to have a whole production. Yeah. The, you know, mo these photos that I showed you from mine, you know, are me and my camera and sometimes an assistant occasionally, yeah. you know, if need be a videographer. Um, yeah. It's really me. the story that really is the power of, of this uh, approach to, to work. It's not the production size. It, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can be a small, medium sized yep. business and, you know, really tell your story. Exactly. Um, you know, you can tell it through the eyes of the dog. You can tell it to yep. evoke feeling. You can tell it through a person. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's Orvis also does a brilliant job um talking about their dogs mm -hmm. um, and uh bringing them out on a hunt kind yep. of and yep. um it was the story it it was the dog was old and it was the last time the dog was going to be going out and like really subtly they didn't you know you saw the orvis products yeah 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 but they never talked about that. Sure. You were drawn in with the, the, the story of it's this dog's last hunt that had, yeah. you know, and how, um, the man made it happen. Yeah. You know, so it's a story that you uncover and you decide how you want to tell it. Um, and it's certainly, you know, mm -hmm. important, I think, to have a, a guide, you, you, you know, like somebody, like me or somebody yeah, yeah, like yeah, you, yeah. Or, you know, that helps them uncover the story and has the vision to tell the story. To bring yeah. it to life. You know, yeah, absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. No, this is phenomenal. Thank you so much, Mindy. You know, I've learned so much, you know, definitely the world of pets is an empathy bridge to audiences. Hearts is super important these days, especially since, you know, there's so staggering information overload. So you got to, you know, stand out in some way. So if people would like to get in touch with you, how can they do that? Um, well, they can reach me. The, my website is dogsimeet.com. Mm -hmm. um, my email is simply mindy at dogs I meet. Yep. Uh, and my phone number and everything is on my website because I'm, I'm old school. I like yep. to be yep. able to pick up a phone and call me if that's sure. how they want to connect with me. Sure. My Instagram is at dogs I meet. Yeah, and I'm sure there are tons of photos there, right? <laughs> exactly. So, and I offer a free um, consultation call, a discovery call. I call it my non sales call. Yeah. Um, and in, it's a call like that, you know, we can talk. Um, I'm happy to talk to anybody and sort of uncover and take them a little bit on a journey. And I think um, whether they, 
people use me or other people, I think when things are really authentic, there's a good bond between who's telling your story. Definitely, um, for so sure. That yeah. call is also for me to see like mm-hmm. if I think that we're a good fit. Um, yeah. And, and their story resonates with Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Yeah, know. that's so, important. Yeah. So thanks again, Mindy. You know, this is was phenomenal. You know, I learned so much and... <laughs> I hope to see everybody in my next episode of the visual storytelling today. So until next time, have a great, wonderful day. Thank Thank you you so much. I really am so happy that you invited me on. Thank you. No, gladly. (laughs) Thanks. Visual storytelling today is recorded in Miami, Florida. The show is published exclusively by visual storytelling Institute. Learn more at visualstorytell.com. You can subscribe to this podcast on the iTunes store. Until next time, don't let your big story wait to be told.